What is that sound you ask? Welcome to the Rec Show Podcast, a show dedicated to beat makers around the world. Kick back, relax with the host, Golden Mind. Yeah, what up? What is going on, everybody? What is going on? What's up? What's up? I hope everybody's counting their blessings and not their problems. Yeah. Yeah, we are we. We bobbing out today, man. Listen, man, we back for episode number 53 of the Rex Show Podcast, man. I appreciate y'all tapping in with me. I go by the name of Golden Mind. I hope y'all are counting your blessings and not your problems. You feel me? Yo, right now you are listening to It Just Is by the one and only Apollo Brown, man. Mellow Music Group stand up, man. Yo. He's got a new beat tape coming out. It's called This Must Be The Place. That's going to be coming out very soon. All right. So he just gave us a little snippet. You know what I mean? Uh, about four days ago, he let us know, man. If you follow him, make sure you follow him on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Bandcamp as well, man. Bandcamp, actually, Mellow Music Group is doing a four, $4.99 for all of their albums on their Bandcamp, man. So... Yo, man, hurry up and go ahead and check it out. Sale ends on Sunday, all right? But, yo, let's get to today, man. Yo, we are going from Japan all the way to Louisiana, man. He's doing his thing on IG, on Twitter, man. He's a dad. He's an MC. He's a beat maker, man. He's an anime fanatic, you know what I mean? Like, yo, he's a family man, first and foremost, for sure, man, but... Yo, man, um, I had to get him on the show, man, so he graciously said yes. So we are going to introduce y'all, my listeners, to the one and only Why No Willie, man. Why No Willie stand up, man, Louisiana stand up. We're going to get to know him, man, play his music, hear from him, and um, yeah, tap in with him, man. So today is going to be a great show. The first one in a couple episodes, but you know what I mean? I'm back on my grind, man. All right. And then, you know, you might get a couple too. Anyway, we'll talk about that later, man. But I hope y'all enjoy your weekend, man. Kick back, relax, enjoy. We'll be back. Peace and love, yo. Woo. Bags is in records, and you were plugged into the Rec Show podcast with Golden Mind.
Yeah, man, yo, so check it out, man. You're listening to Why No Willie discography, man. I went digging deep in the in the, his uh, discography, man. So I want y'all to uh, pay attention, man. Y'all gotta dig deep, man. So go on his band camp and SoundCloud, man. Tap in with him. But yo, the tracks you heard before was uh, All Soul, Man Drill. Um, off the uh, Paper Bags album So follow Bag Season Records on Bandcamp Alright, check them out man Check out whynowilly.com But yo, um, let's get into it man So yo, Why No Willy Welcome to the show Just for the internets that don't know who you are man Go ahead, introduce yourself Where you're from, what your name means um, Where your name originated from And then, you know, go ahead and name any uh, associated collectives you might be a part of too yo what's good y'all my name is Wana Willie I'm originally from Philadelphia by way of New Jersey I spent a lot of time bouncing around uh, the tri-state area New, New York New Jersey Pennsylvania growing up I've always been a hip-hop head my first musical memory is we got the jazz by a tribe called quest I spent a lot of time um, in my childhood growing up around record shops, going to places like the Prince of the Record Exchange, um, going to places like A1 Records in New York and a bunch of other spots, just trying to find dope things that I could flip. I originally made my beats on things like like, uh, the SP-404, Ableton. Uh, my first primitive beats were loops on a turntable recorded in Audacity and trying to make those into into beats. Yeah, man. Yo, so I see your little ones with the, on the show as well, man. So everybody say hello to Wino Willie's daughter, man. Young one, man. Beautiful. Yo, so, man, let's get into it, man. You know, like, so... Just for the internet to know, like, how did you begin your journey into music and sampling besides, you know, going to A1 Records and stuff like that? Like, who really, who put you on? Like, what family and friends put you on to certain genres of music? And what were there, if you can remember? My grandfather put me on to most music on my on my, on my my father's side. He put me on to stuff like Sun Ra and, and Abstract Jazz, Mom Davis. Spain and, and uh, bitches and stuff like that. My mom, growing up, she listened to a lot of like classic soul, like uh, Phyllis Hyman and, and Le Beaufort and stuff like that. My dad was a was a proto hip hop head, meaning like Rakim, KRS, um, and then of course my uh, my cousin. The mixtape era Philly stuff. So, Eagle, Freeway, um, and and those were really my main musical influences coming up. All right, yo. So, pardon the technical difficulties. You know what I mean? Like, yo, when you when you taking care of a kid and you trying to answer questions, it ain't the easiest thing to do, man. So. Give, give give grace, all right. He's doing the best he can, but the rest of the the rest of the interview is pretty pretty smooth. So, um, let me ask you this: um, what's the what's the one moment that sparked your interest in you into you creating your own beats? And then, like, when did you know it was time to, to let the internet hear your beats or the remixes? Yeah. The moment that really got me interested in making my own beats. Um, was when I started watching Adult Swim in 03 um, and like Midnight Run and stuff like that. I always loved the visual aspect and, 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 and component, but then also um, the homies wanting to rhyme on stuff and, and, and YouTube wasn't really a thing like there wasn't instrumental so you just had to make your own stuff and 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 get little clips here and there and then LimeWire was coming up you just typed in hip-hop beat and 
you know, there are so much terrible things, but I think the one that really sparked my interest was trying to figure out how people were constructing things like listening to Tribe, listening to Doom, listening to Mad Lib, Dilla, the, the classics pr- premiere, just like trying to understand that them taking these records that I grew up listening to with my people and, 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 and making them into something that they're able to manipulate and make. Um, I started letting people really hear my work probably 08. I had my like this little podcast on Automatic where I'd like do little DJ mixes and then I play like a beat um, beat on there. And then like SoundCloud in 2010, 2011. I keep coming back to is probably the enemy produced by uh, produced by uh, DJ Premier for Big L off of um, that joint with Fat Joe. I just I love the the pianos in that, the drums on it. It's, it feels right to me every time I hear it. I get excited. Um, I'm not sure what Primo flipped for that. I'm, I'm not a big proponent of sample smishing personally, so. Um, I'm never gonna answer about samples being flipped or whatever. The homies ask me, I might lead them in the right direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no snap. You know, no sample snitching over here, man. So, yeah, we don't do that on this show. All right. I don't even know why. I don't even know why I asked that question. You know, if I if I did ask that question, but yo. So, okay, DJ Premier, you know what I mean? One of the greatest producers of all time. Yo, if, he, if DJ Premier ever hears your show, man, much respect to you, DJ Premier. If you ever listen to the show, listen to any episodes of the Red Show or anything like that, but that would be a geek, a music geek moment if that, if that did happen. But yo, can you um? Can you recommend some like must see, read, or listen to content for my listeners who may be on their journey on beats and, and music? And keep in mind, it can be anything like a documentary, book, YouTube tutorial, a podcast. It can be anything, man. Anything you want to recommend to to the internets? Recommended books um, for people getting into beats and music. Personally. My favorite stuff is the Check the Technique by Brian Coleman. Um, I love those. I love, um, honestly, like non-related to music books. So things like uh, Autobiography of Malcolm X, uh, Soul of Black Folk by The Boys, like so. you to create music because music is our is all the way we another way to communicate it's another language for us to communicate with our surrounding area um and our lifestyle so honestly if we can put ourselves in a position as people um and specifically african diaspora of understanding ourselves connecting to our, our, our tribe and our an- and our ancestors we're gonna move forward and, and and create things that are amazing so as far as literature the greats you know James Baldwin read some Baldwin read some um, you know read some Du Bois read some Ta-Nehisi Coates now I like ta a lot and things like that comics things like that
documentary uh, for my specific genre. Um, I love actually this really um, little known film called In Tune and On Time, which is uh, features like J-Rock and Cut Chemist, but also these like great breakbeat drummers. Um, it's a it's a really like it's a it's a cut done by B plus. I also like um, the documentary on the Good Life Cafe. Um, shoot the Hard Knock Life tour DVD things like that. Um, as far as like getting beat tips, J Phil uh, Stolen Drums. Shout out Stolen Drums. Shout out Side Chain Society. Um, and a lot of um, people in the community do 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 documentaries and do uh, podcasts about like tips and tricks. So just keep your eyes out. You know, you can go search search the instrument um, on, on on Instagram. You might find somebody who's going to give you some tips. Word. Okay. So yo man, a, a lot going into that man. Everything that uh, my man Wino Willie recommended i'm gonna put in the description of the show so it's going to be a link to it you can go directly to it and see what he's talking about and also support that way and get your learn on it all right so start learning start opening your mind keep your mind open but yeah all good recommendations man damn that's why i asked that question man because you know what i mean like you just never know what people are gonna say so and some i didn't even know about some of these documentaries and stuff like that. So, Tony Hasey Coates, know about him. James Baldwin, I know about him. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm learning too. You know what I mean? But anyway, yo, so, so, why don't Willie, um, from your social media content, you can be seen using like a SP404 SX, and then you got it like tag team with the Akai NPC Live. So, you create some of the most soulful beats with yours, like crazy fire, man. If y'all don't know about the Grochi um, series, um, Welcome Home Willie that he did with Grochi Party, tap in with him, man. All right. So, um, but what other musical equipment or, or dolls do you use to craft your beats? And, you know, which one of those, like the SP44 or the Akai or the Koala, like which one is. Which one is more important to you? Yeah. Okay. As far as like, I know a lot of folks are familiar with me through my video content. Um, my brother is a film was a film major. Is a film major. Um, you know, my brother's a film major, and what he does is kind of like uh, he likes a lot of abstract things. So shout out to my brother Xavier. He put me on to, you know, collage and film work. And a lot of my stuff, I'm like looking at like Michael Gondry, uh, Spike Jones. Um, I'm a big visual hip, like skate tape kid. So watching um, a lot of uh, skating, like visuals growing up, uh, similar to like, um, Supreme, like Supreme Tape, uh, watching Thrasher, things like that, um, and just getting inspired by the creativity of the hip hop meets visual aspect. God's Connect um, was a huge influence as well. And then what I did was I grabbed from a here from my brother, um, and I just learned how to use green screen effects, masking, things like that, and then syncing it with my music and just making stuff that's visually entertaining, similar to like uh, an Air One mixtape. Yeah, man. Yo, so, okay, I have to ask this question. Like, you're a, you know, you're an anime head. Like, your anime selection and the beats that you match are go incredibly well. Um, are anime and samples your muses and inspirations or when it comes to creating music or or is it something else and then like what um what's your favorite anime and what's your favorite decade to sample from that's that's a good question here i i started making beats uh, around 
right around the time I started watching Adult Swim and Tsunami and things like that. So as far as animes, of course, the classics like um, like Yu Yu Hakusho, um, Dragon Ball Z. I don't know anyone who doesn't like that. Akira. <laughs> um, currently, I've been big on um, Spy Family. Shout out to Frank Carrick for the suggestion for that. Um, Hunter Hunter, Attack on Titan. Um, as far as like deep cuts, I'll watch like little OVAs here and there, like just like stuff I can find on YouTube. I'll watch Fish of the North Star, like some some old joints um, that just kind of harken back to a, a time to bring me into that like you know desolate, like uh, oversaturated deep contrast anime that I loved in like the 90s. Decade to sample from, um, my favorite decade to sample from is probably the 70s for jazz. 80s for ambient and then let's say the 60s for like bass sounds you know but I I use a lot of like a lot of stuff I play and a lot of stuff the homies are sending me like um, stuff that they're putting in their packs shout out to AJ Hall Um, shout out to Obscure shout out to um, Lex Sounds and um, the homies and of course like the bag season homies and the grill sheet party homies for always putting me on in places um, sonically So listen, man, I had to go deep in this discography. I told you I was going deep in this discography, man. Um, you've been listening to, like, um, the VA How Many Beats 2 compilation, um, the Wino Joints Volume 0, Beef and Broccoli. You've been listening to the Bake Sale Volume 5 by Chiba, Chiba Records. That's a, a, a UK label. Um, you've been listening to the Koala B-Cast flip challenge that he did, challenge number 12. Um, yeah, man, you've been listening to like a whole bunch of things from uh, off the a tribute to Sade by Wano Willie and Friend Carrick. Yo, man, I went deep, yo, <laughs> deep in the discography, man. So um, y'all check him out, man. Don't don't sleep on Wano Willie, man. All right. But yo, Wano Willie, um, let, let's get back into the interview, man. Um, so like like the four pillars of hip hop are DJing, MCing, breaking, and graphing, right? So which element did you begin with, uh, or begin your journey with, and then how did it affect you when you discovered it, you know? 
So I'm a through and through hip hop head. I've I've tried my hand at pretty much everything. Um, I I danced when I was younger. I still do um, hand styles um, from time to time and incorporate that into art as I can. Um, DJing is the first thing that I was interested in. And um, what really got me excited about it was just like listening to how people would blend and scratch things together, like at parties and um, like DJ Jazzy Jeff mixtapes. And just listening to like uh, the mixtapes where DJs really get busy and put things together. Yeah, I, yo, I get it because. Yeah, I was on punishment a lot as a kid, and um, I was listening to the radio. I was listening to Power ninety nine FM, like that would that would be the 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 radio station I'd be listening to when I hear all the DJ mixes at nighttime, um, the radio shows in the morning, like you know what I mean, like keep your head to the sky, baby, bubba. I, yo, I know all of that by heart, man. Like yo, it was crazy, but I think. Um, I think being, you know, being on punishment kind of kept me out of trouble, kept me alive, but also thrust me even more into hip hop, man. So, yeah, DJ turntablism, I feel you, bruh. I feel you. Yo, let's keep it going, man. So, um, can you name your childhood teenager and adult beat maker superheroes and tell us why they were so important? Um, at those specific times in your life and major key alert no dramas off limits bro um my favorite beat makers growing up um in my childhood Timbaland the Neptunes um DJ Premier Q-Tip and Dilla were probably the most listened to in like my young days. In adolescence, I started listening to like really abstract stuff. Um, LP, Anarchon, um, Anapop Consortium, um, Def Jokes. Def Jokes could do no wrong for me in my teenage years. Um, outside of that, um, I also started listening to like stuff like Onra and um, I listened to um, The Field, which was like an ambient, like an ambient house type of project it was kind of crazy. Um, in my adulthood, like coming out of college, um, man, I, the list, this is a long, long list. Shout out to um, DZ. Um, you know, bopper, bopper gang activities. Shout out to Rex Mason. Shout out to Frank Carey, E.T. Doe, Lucas Wiley, St. Amethyst. Um, the whole New Orleans beat making scene. Lord B. Jitsu on um, Grocery Party. Q3, Sadu Gold. Um, man, the list goes on. Nicholas Craven, I really enjoy. Um... I love Stolen Drums, Lean Lizzy, Neelak the Beat Ninja. There, there's a ridiculous amount of people. Pretty much, if you go on, um, like my following and <laughs> Instagram, I follow people that I really, really, really love, and um, I, I'm, you'll see me reposting people. Tatsumaki though is probably my favorite right now. Tatsumaki is nuts. He uses only Koala sampler and is in an iPad and he makes this really mind expanding, um, this mind expanding music that just like really blows me out the water. Yeah, bro. Yo, Tatsumaki, shout out to Tatsumaki, man. He's been on the show, man. Yo, he opened my brain with his interview. Yo, like y'all gotta go check it out, man. Um, I think it's in the 30s or something like that. But yo, he... He's, he's a killer, man. Straight killer on the, on the Koala gang, man. Shout out to all my Koala Koala gang. And, um, yeah, man, Solon Drums, Lee Lizzy. Lee Lizzy's been on the show as well. Um, yeah, man, like, yo, all, everybody you named, um, I'm going to try and find out and, and put in here uh, in the description as well. Stolen Drums is definitely another one, man. 
Yo, a lot of a lot of good people that you name, man. So I appreciate that. Yo, we all get your history, get your Googles on, and start learning these people's names and tap into what they're doing, man. They're doing some amazing, amazing things. All right, and for uh, just music in general, man. All right. Um, but let me ask you a question. Like, uh, so, like, I wanted to highlight a few albums you created. Um, like. Welcome Home, Brother Willie, featuring the incomparable Sun Ra, uh, a couple of Loose Jones, uh, that's, a, that's an East Coast term, Jones, <laughs> and uh, up to, Uptown Conversations with Melzer and Love Ulysses, right? Um, all fire albums, but what were the inspiration behind these amazing dope projects, and like, how did it, how did everything like come together? I know there's a story behind it, you know what I mean? I appreciate that. Um, when it came to Welcome Home, Brother Willie, um, Bag Season partnered with Grilchy Party. Um, we've been fans of each other's work, um, and 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 Mark's Mark Speck reached out to um, Frank Carrick and myself around the same time, and just told us to kind of. Just keep our eyes open. Um, he had had an idea for Grocery Party Flavors Volume 1 and Volume 2. And I started working on this project uh, in, you know, it has beats from 2018 to, to, to 2020, 2021. Um, and I started working on this project just kind of like paying homage to my grandfather and my um, my my cousin um, Rufus Harley, who was a jazz uh, jazz saxophone and more more famously known for playing bagpipes, and he visited me in a dream um, in the in the very early part of the pandemic, and really kind of pushed me to to finish this this music which combines Afrofuturism, um, you know, crime scores and boom bap, which is the stuff that I love and I feel like represents what I listen to coming up and what I want to hear going forward. Um, and when, when Spect approached me about this, I put together this project and he helped me to, to shape it and refine it. Um, into this piece of, you know, this body of work that you're hearing now. And I'm really excited um, for y'all to hear all the to hear the follow-up and um, the next thing we have coming on Volume 3. Um, when it comes to Uptown Conversations with Meltzer and Love Ulysses, um, that was um, done during my evacuation from... New Orleans during the hurricane, uh, Hurricane Ida in um, August of 2021, I had to evacuate. And what I ended up doing was going through records that I had and passing MPC files between Meltzer and myself um, and the kid Love Ulysses. Um, we, we connected earlier that year and he just has this interesting style. Um, he's from Minnesota. So we decided to do a couple of joints together, um, and then weave it together with some instrumentals and put out a cassette that was limited, um, just to, just to show some love. Yeah. Yo, see, these, these are the stories that you don't even know about the background, the things that experiences that people have. Um, in their day-to-day -day lives and still finding time to create during turmoil, during a move, like move, having to be evacuated from your house or from your city or from the state. Like, yo, man, amazing, man. Yo, yo, shout out to you, Wanda Willie. Shout out to Melzer. Shout out to Love uh, Ulysses. This project is dope, amazing. I think everybody should tap into this. Um, it's available on Bandcamp, so go ahead and check it out on Bandcamp. Um, the name of the album 
It's called Uptown Conversations, man. I think it's on Melzer's Bandcamp, but uh, that's M L T Z R. All right, check it out, man. Show love, show support, man. Um, so as we get ready to you know to round this out, man. Um, you're a New Jersey native, but raised in Philly. Shout out to Jersey, shout out to Philly, PA. Um, and currently you're based out of New, or- New Orleans, Louisiana, and join forces with some amazing beat makers, producers from forming Bag Season Records. All right, we already had one of your your cohorts on the show, Frank Herrick. Now we got you. So shout out to Bag Season Records, man. Yo, how did this Voltron movement come together with all y'all? Like, it's you after one. It's... Um, Oh man, ah oh, man, I can't believe I'm, I'm brain farting the the, uh, the other two members. But yo, how did how did it come together? And like, how can we uh, and others, whoever's listening to the show, support you and other beat makers in the uh, New Orleans, Louisiana area? Backseater Records came together from. A, a, a need and void in the space in New Orleans at the time. Um, the four of us met through various channels. I moved down to New Orleans in 2017 and attended this Ableton live like support group, <laughs> I guess is the best way to describe it. You trade uh, knowledge and Afka and Delicious Beats were there. I gave a presentation on like my racks I was using at the time um, in Ableton. It was like stuff that I built um, for the type of sounds I was getting, that, that grit and grime. And they just approached me and we linked up outside of um, we linked up outside of outside of the meeting. Um, and, and Afka and Delicious Beats were already kind of linking together. And then they invited me over. I met Frank Carrick through AF the Naysayer. We did a show together and we really connected and clicked. Um, and then 2018, I got um, laid off from my accounting job. And I decided to dive into music full time. And I spent a lot of time with, 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 with those three gentlemen. And we, you know, put together this lo-fi slash beat culture night at our local arcade, C Cave Arcade, that really kind of solidified us working together. Um, and then we just established bag season the end of 2018, beginning of 2019. And we are always looking to support beat culture in New Orleans and in Louisiana in general. So connecting with folks um, in Lafayette, connecting with folks in Baton Rouge. Um, if you're in New Orleans and you're interested in playing, you know, beats, reach out to us and we're always trying to put on events and, and move around. Uh, Controller Eyes was a huge help for us. In 2019, they, they had us come up and play. And from there, um, We've been playing different spots, uh, Beat Cinema in L.A., uh, spots in New York, spots in Philadelphia, and just trying to spread the word, spread the message, and connect the dots. Yeah, man, yo, y'all 
shout out to everybody on the Bag Season Records label, man, collective. Shout out to everybody you named, man. Shout out to the what you're trying to do, the initiative to get this spread the word, man. Um, I'm just trying to add to that and help you all out. Um, I hope I'm doing a good job. You know what I mean? Um, and plugging everybody into what y'all are doing, man, because it's a good cause. It's building. All right. And once again, it is building and not destroying. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'll, I'll always support that, man. I, between Bad Season Records, between um, uh, FABC, um, the Flip a Beat Collective, yo, like Flip, Flip a Beat Club. Um, yo, it's, it's a couple other collectives out there that's doing some amazing stuff too, man. So um, don't be upset if I forgot you. I'm just trying to get uh, all my thoughts together. But yo, so, um, you know, what are your thoughts on, you know, how beat makers can benefit from emerging tech such as Web3 and blockchain music compared to, you know, streaming, especially when it comes to income? Because I see like um, Illmind just posted something about um, he's taking his everything, his beat making, everything off of Twitch, YouTube, and is going directly into Web3, man. So he's definitely integrating, changing the game, man. What are your thoughts on, you know, how technology is moving in the, the direction technology is moving in when it comes to, you know, music? I've always been interested in technology in relations to music and this uh, current zeitgeist of, of Web3 and blockchain music is fascinating to me because you look at what iTunes did and streaming in general did to music. Oh, excuse me. You look at what iTunes and streaming did to music and you see the changes, good and bad. Like, it's really dope that you have full catalogs of music at your at, at, at your fingertips as a um, as a student, right? And as a person creating, it's really dope that you can have full catalogs of music. But the equity for artists is just non-existent. So Web three and blo- and blockchain um, technology is a way that if used properly can make it um, an even playing field because people can support you like if you were selling merchandise, right? So I've been involved in a couple of NFT drops with um, Nifty Tunes and with my homie Charm Taylor and Maroof and Jamie Cornelia and I don't have any negative uh, feelings on the technology itself But like anything, there are people who are grifters and people who are, um, you know, snake oil salesmen. And there's people who are using technology to make things that are um, meaningful to them and and, and helpful to connect to the community. So I'm hoping that it it can continue to grow in a way that will, um, you know, benefit artists. Yeah, man, and that's, you know what I mean? Like, artists make the world go around, man. Artists, basically, like, artists, um, I can't remember who said that. I was trying to think of the quote. But um, they said artists are the ones that, like, comment or commentary on what's going on in real life. So, yeah, man, y'all, y'all doing an amazing job at that, man. So, yeah, I agree, man. Um... Okay, so last question to bring everything home. What should the internet look out for from Wino Willie in 2022? You know, how can the internet tap into you, your music, bag season records, um, you know, everything you got going on right now, grocery party. Go ahead, plug your socials and any final thoughts that you might have, man. Shout out to my daughter in the background. You hear my daughter 
She's uh, hanging out with me right now while I'm doing this interview. Just wanted to hang out and say hi. So tell the internet what's good to Calliope. Uh, the internet should be on the lookout for a couple of projects. I got a tape coming with Daniel Son. I got um, vinyl coming with Grocery Party later. I got cassettes coming with Strong Maurice on Strange Daisy. And I'll be bouncing around doing shows in New Orleans and, and maybe I'll pop out to the cities in the end of the year. I'm thinking about popping back out to Atlanta, popping out to New Orleans and New York, um, to Philadelphia and New York, excuse me. Um, I really appreciate you for having me. My daughter is, uh, is tired of me doing this interview, so I appreciate y'all's patience. Thank you. Peace. Yeah, man, yo, so shout out to, and let me make sure I say this right, Calliope. I don't know how to spell it, but um, shout out to Calliope. Shout out to you, Wino Willie, man. Shout out to Bag Season Records, man. Shout out to you, the listeners. I appreciate every single one of you that pay attention to the show, that have made it this far in the show. And I appreciate the show for, you know, what it's doing and what it's bringing to the, you know, to hip hop, man. So shout out to you. All right, yo, you know what I mean? Let's clap it up for you, man. <laughs> clap it up for you one time, man. So, yo, um, that's how we go ahead in the show, man. We're going to end the show, episode number 53 with Wino Willie. Yo, run it back again so you can get some more tips and tricks and all that stuff and recommendations. And uh, share this on the internet. Um, also, support directly at Goldemine Official. Dot com. That's goldenmineofficial.com. I'm your host, Golden Mine. And um, yeah, we're going to see you on another one. Make sure you another one, man. Go ahead. Make sure you count your blessings and not your problems. And uh, yeah, that's it, man. Damn, that was quick. Yo, I, I, I miss having um, people on the show, man. So. Yeah, we're going to get some more. Next week is going to be a special one as well, man. Um, we're going all the way to Florida. All right, so from Tokyo, Japan to Florida next week. All right? <laughs> um, yeah, man, stay blessed, stay healthy. And I'm going to see you on another one, man. That's what it is, man. Peace and love, yo.
can't tell like younger kids or other producers like, that's cheating. You can't really be said, but for bruh, like when it comes to this producing shit, you can do whatever you want. You've been listening to the Rec Show podcast. Be sure to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Remember three things: believe in your music, take care of your mental, become the best version of yourself. Until the next one, Golden Mind signing off. Peace and love, yo. To be the best, you got to work overtime. To be the best, you got to work overtime. These young boys getting better. This is not like the NBA when you can retire. Like this is, you have to keep going. Thank you.